Okay, four and a half degrees, and we're halfway through March, and the car's fully loaded. <laughs> Actually, the sun's out, so that's good. Um, I'm heading down to the south coast, um, to the New Forest. Um, we're going to be loading up um, for my next adventure, which I will show you in a short while. So here I am, about five hours of driving and we've arrived in the new forest at Buckler's Hard. I mentioned a couple of episodes ago I was considering getting a bigger boat and well here it is. A Nicholson 32 Mark III called Stowaway. It's probably a little bit bigger than I had intended but to be honest I really like the write-ups of these Nicholsons. They've proven themselves to be a blue water cruiser time and time again. Uh, this one had this been on the hard now. for at least a couple of years and uh, as you can see needed a little bit of a tidy up, um, lots of flaky paint, definitely in need of some sea water though and uh, a bloody good sail. So this is it, this is Stirway and Stirway's cabin. Uh, I've got a little bit of sorting out to do today. Um, I'm hoping to get onto the hull as soon as possible because it is quite a nice sunny day out there. Um, it's easy to get absorbed with the cabin, but really priority is is outside and on the hull. Uh, and I think uh, over this weekend I've only got maybe two days, good days, so. Yeah, can't really spend too much time in here, although I do have plans to stick my diesel heater outlet um, through that locker um, with the intention of installing it in that locker there. But we'll have to see how we really get on. It's not it's not the utmost priority at the minute. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, like plenty of locker space. And, um, I got like a head unit here, live um, speakers and nice four cabin, nice V berth and heads and um, a wet locker there. Obviously, the mast on this comes through the deck, and it's what they call keel steps. So it comes through down to the keel, um, and there's a little. A little um, sink here in the alley, which is nice. This is the stack pack which comes with it. So yeah, all exciting stuff. Um, the car is probably about 50 meters away from me at the minute, um, and I've got lots of stuff, L lots and lots of stuff to get out. Um, and uh, there's some sort of like barricade on the. Um, in the boatyard for this side so like any vessels um that need to get the uh, vehicle access a little bit restricted so i might have to just go and speak to someone um but yeah here we go day one oh, i just unloaded the car i can't believe i got that much stuff in to be honest uh so i've kind of like split it into two one side is maintenance and the other side is kit for load up i'm gonna try and the Hebridean diesel here. So I started loading some of the stuff into the cabin and outside. I've got most of it up off the ladder. Um, I can't believe how much some of this stuff actually weighs. I mean, this box is just full of like tap from uh, Katrina, but the box weighs a ton. Um, I struggle to get it up the ladder. <laughs> to get up the ladder, to be honest. Um, and yeah, that box over there is just like charts and stuff, but um, yeah, I'll find plenty of space. The, uh, I'll probably sleep in the four berth tonight and then um, everything for the previous owner, I'll just leave to one side, I think. Um, I'm just trying to get things squared away a little bit, really. Um, and I, I spent so much time sorting this out and uh, kind of expected to be starting work on the, on the boat itself, but at the minute it's all just about sort of loading up and getting things kind of where where I want them or where I need them. I've taken off these lights because I, I tried to operate the 
switch panel and only the small little reading lights came on with the cabin lights. So check these out and they were like, where are they? Pretty ancient kind of tube lights that got taken off. But all the, as you can see, all the wiring's like really mucky and horrible. So I've I've taken these off and I might might try and isolate the uh, the main feed to this instead of just sticking some, um, you know, uh, electrical tape around them, I think. But uh, yeah, it's still um, getting things sorted out. I've got some, I think, some cleaning solution for this at some point I'll do, but it's not on the priority list at all. Uh, I've got some little sort of blackout curtain you can buy. Um, I think I've just brought that in, actually. It might actually be outside. <laughs> Even though I've packed everything away, I can't figure where anything is. But um, yeah, there's like this blackout material um, just to get me by, really, for the windows. Um, just fastened on with Velcro. There's been like a rail at some point up here, but it's come off a long time ago in some fixing points over there. So in the long run, I might be able to rig something up. But for the time being, it's uh, it's just tidy it up as best as possible, really, I think. And... Um, yeah, a lot of cleaning work. I'm generally speaking, the upholstery is all right. It's not sagging or anything. It's just um, just needs a bit of a tidy up. So yeah, um, I see the first thing I hit was the kitchen. Just gave that a proper good clean. Um, because if I am going to be using it, I do not want to be picking anything up. And um, the actual water tank is down here. And I, I checked that a little while ago, and that is like one of these like aluminium tops. Pretty cool, but it's needed to clean out as you can see. And I checked the bilge pump or the water pump, and that doesn't work, so it's going to be bottled water until I can get some time to, yeah, um, do a bit on that, clean it up, obviously. Yeah, that's such a cool little latch, so so seaworthy, very good. Um, so the engine lives behind the stairs, and um, it has been run up and tested, it's okay. Um, it's had quite a lot of work on the top end, it's a Volvo Penta 2030D I think. Um, it's running all okay. I've got uh, about, come down here on the Friday, I've got about two or three days down here. I'll try and get as much done as possible. And um, yeah, just play it by ear. I hope to get the anti foul on, that's probably the priority on top of everything. So, with the launch in a couple of weeks, I may not likely get down here. <laughs> and I've got a cold as well, which is a bit of a struggle. Um, but we'll just have to take one thing at a time. So, I uh, made these brackets up for the Hebridean. Um, obviously, I need a little bit more of an overhang. Uh, on the Nicholson, um, these are basically just two pieces of, uh, oh, I don't know what they are actually, just two pieces of softwood and then I've just covered them with uh, fiberglass. Um, at home, it's complete guess really, um, whether this would actually work. I've just been looking at the photos, but yeah, it's just two pieces of um, softwood, timber. Well, I thought, what was it, 60 by 40 mill and then um, just glue together at the bottom at one half just so it clears the transom um, I think I've caught it just right um, I've just uh, basically uh, got the mounting bolts and then set them in resin actually in the epoxy uh, in the wood sorry um, without having to go all the way through the top I'm hoping it's going to be rigid enough there's not going to be any huge amounts of um, pressure on these brackets in that direction um, but I'm just hoping that's going to be enough to get me down to the to pin mills you can see there there are the bolts coming through on the bracket I've just done and there's like a sort of small bulkhead there and I've just cleared that for the uh, for the other one so uh, when that's um, all in position should give me enough to position this at the end and then mount the uh, the Hebridean so yeah let's see how it goes it's complete um, complete chance this to be honest whether it's going to work and 
think so far it's been okay. Obviously, this has just got the single center mounted um, uh, backstay. So I've had to obviously design this thing around that, which I think has worked. We'll see. So that's the bracket on. It's um it's a little wide, but it can't really be helped because I've got to keep clear of all this stuff. But um yeah, I could probably get around that by putting something in there. But nonetheless, that's position. It shouldn't shift around too much. I might just put a bit of wood uh, in there somehow. Maybe, I'm not sure. Um, that section there is just stopping it from curling all the way up. Um, so it keeps it nice and straight there, which is good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do today is um, just check out some of these blisters on the, hull, on the uh, rudder, sorry. Um, there are quite a few, well, there are a number of them, um, which I just need to kind of grind back the area and um, just apply some filler um, just to make it good. Just, there we go, we've got a few there. There's a little bit of play in this rudder as well, but I don't think it's gonna to be too bad. You can just see it there. But yeah, you've got a couple of bits here, one bit there. There's quite a lot of, um, <coughs> I'm not sure what the, yeah, so you can just see, that's the, just try and focus, um, that bit there, that's the anti-foul layer, and then you've got, like, you're fairing your gel coat, and, uh, and then you're down to your fiberglass there, um, there's a couple of bits there. And there, one at the bottom, there's a bit around the actual uh, gudgeon there, and this is just just fiberglass, and the um, the anti foul is just a way that you can see. Like there's another one there, so yeah, we'll take them back a little bit, and um, I've got some West systems over there to uh, mix up, and um, yeah, should make good of that. Just check that area down there by the keel as well, but it should be okay. In general though, the, um, the hull's looking really, really good. I, can't, I haven't seen any bumps on lumps or anything, which is good. There has been some epoxy work done on this in the past, um, according to the survey. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, so just about done uh, with these blister grind backs. Um, there's a few which are pretty deep. Uh, this one here, you can't really see it, but there's probably a good, I don't know, five mil ground out of that one. And this one here was quite deep as well. Um, but nothing too massive. Probably got a little bit more to grind out on that one. Um, and that one was quite big. But then on the other side, we go around here. Uh, that one was all the way down to the foam core. And then this one here um, was probably the most concerning, I think. Uh, yeah, just kept on going. And that's actually dead out. So I'm not going to go any more on that one. That is actually in the hull. So I'm just gonna <coughs> clean it up and um, stick some epoxy in there, seal it up good and proper. But this side generally wasn't too bad at all. Okay, so that's the um, West Systems filler is on the uh, on the obviously the areas that I've grown out. Um, and I've just used filleting blend. Um... <coughs> Excuse me. Just use this microfiber adhesive filler um, just to thicken it up. The only thing is that I found was on the other side, a really big gap um, down at the bottom. I'm going to probably build that up in a number of different layers because it's starting to sag, so I just need to tidy that up a little bit. And likewise with a few of these other ones. So I'm going to have to put the gloves back on again and just tidy that up a little. about two and a half weeks until she goes back in after I think it's nearly a two year stint out of the water 
um, and yeah, so so there's there's sort of like a bit of an emphasis on trying to get everything done before she goes back in. At least at least the main things, um, you know, making her look all shiny and nice and a hundred million bucks is is not um, it's not the key for this trip. It's just uh, or this this maintenance visit is just um, just to make it good really um, for bringing her around to pin mill. Let's check in the bilge pump here. Um, there's actually two quite large um, bilges here. Uh, one's the deep keel and the other's in the engine sort of compartment. So there's a diverter valve to the inlet of this bilge pump. But I've just um, just tried to move it and it's not very secure and it's mount there, it's sort of coming off. So I'm going to put a few screws through this base plate, try and get that a bit more rigid than what it is because that's just going to fall off eventually. Okay, just going to town a little bit on the bilge pump and uh, taking it apart. Thought it'd be, uh, thought it might make sense now while I've got all the tools here. So just to explain a little bit on this bilge pump and the operation of. Um, so this section here is the, the lower, or what I'd say is the um, non-water part of the pump. Um, so obviously there's your handle port there and that flips up and down and actuates the diaphragm seal which is this rubbery thing here and that essentially moves the water um, in and out of the upper chamber or the water part of the chamber um, and the direction is controlled by the inlet um, the inlet valve uh, the non-return valve there and then the, the outlet part there. So when you're pumping away, that pressure isn't, the water isn't gonna go back through where it came, it can only go out this way. So um, a couple of things to note, because I've taken this apart because um, I just wanted to make sure everything was uh, good with the diaphragm. So what can happen is that if you have any nuts or screws or anything laying in your bilge and um, the pump draws it up when you're doing your routine maintenance, your routine bilge pumping. Um, it can get trapped in this rubber diaphragm and eventually perforate the rubber, which means that you don't get the full action of the um, of the the pump when you when you actually go to move it. Um, so in the lower part of the chamber, to keep an eye out, and they've got this small little um, leak a hole here so that you know if the actual rubber is gone so if you know if you've got water coming out of your your bilge casing you know that it's a good chance that this is actually gone then you need to just replace you can get change out kits replace this rubber diaphragm i think this one's okay don't see any cracks yet but i just need to clean that up a little bit more and um i've uh, just got to put a bit of wood underneath this bottom plate so I can mount that a little bit more securely than what it is at the minute I think um, I think that could do with another section of the wood just underneath screwed onto that plate and then I can go in through the top and make that all sturdy but other than that I take some of these old screws out put them away I think we're about there thing I have just noticed unfortunately is that the pin or the pivot pin to hold the um, the mounting uh, bolt to the um, tire frame seal it's got these little circlips which keep this thing in position if it starts moving side to side both of them have actually corroded which means that it could just free up there and stop it working so I'm gonna have to get something there to, to sort that out that's a bit of a bugger I did see them laying in the bottom there and thought where they came from. So there's uh, something else to look out for with these. Hmm. I've had to just pull a bit of fandangery here, but um, I've got a stainless bolt through there now. Which I've had to drill out the holes a little bit more just to get the... Um, there's a nylock uh, nut there which is now positioned on this, this arm just to stop it from moving around. I think that's probably going to be 
a better uh, solution long term than that little pin over there with the uh, with the circlips either side, which to be honest just corroded off as soon as I took the thing apart. So yeah, just uh, on these Henderson pumps, just something to be aware of really. So another job I needed to do was to remove the few chain links and fit the swivel to the anchor something I'm quite in favour of and then it was jumping on to the anti fouling I wasn't sure what make the existing anti fouling was so I had enough primer to do just the parts which are probably the high wear areas around the cockpit sort of valves and uh, along the edges would it be too much to ask for one dry day Well, the anti fouls going on. I've um, I've done all the edges uh, up to sort of like the top sides um, before this rain sort of started up. Um, but yeah, it's going really well. Thin down that classics quite uh, nicely. I think it's around five or ten percent at the minute, so it's going on nice and um, evenly. There's like quite a lot of uh, working with the roller when it's that that sort of thinned out. Um, I've got a few things to do while I'm waiting for the rain to stop. Um, tidy up this mess for a start. Fitted the 50 watt panel this morning just onto the coach roof there um, and connected the charge controller up because uh, the charge controller is just in there and in that little cubby hole just in there, nice ticking away, not much sun at the minute um, but um, yeah essentially I've got the quick connect plugs I think this is probably just going to be my um, sort of standby option until I can get probably some um, sockets coming out here somewhere I think um, and yeah the IP rated ones that'd be pretty smart and then these essentially you can have a double up connector so I could connect my 100 watt and my 50 watt together and get somewhere in the region about sort of I suppose five to seven amps on a really good day so yeah uh, at least now that is charged for the batteries um, to keep them topped up so that's good pleased with that the um, diesel heater which I had planned or intended on fitting into here I can't until I get some sort of better bracket system made up because as you can see it's just straight into the hull these are not C um, these are not C hatches so I've, I've got to do something with these at some point as well um, to make them a little bit more, um, I suppose, seaworthy, if you like, because that runs straight into the bilge in the cabin. So, yeah, I need to do something like that. So, eventually, it stopped raining enough for me to get on with the anti foul and finish it off. As always, it's weird spending this much time on an area that you're not likely to see for the next seven months but hey ho as much as I would have liked to spend more time on the top side of the hull I couldn't um, the only thing I could really do was to sand off with 180 grip um, as you can see there on the left side of the hull is where I've already been and the right side is the kind of condition it was on both sides of the hull um, it's a sort of like mixture of dirt and flaky paint where the existing paint job has sort of started to come away and like back down to the gel coat so it really wasn't adhered that well in the first place. And it took uh, took quite a lot of time for me to do this and this is this is the final day so I, I was really pushed for time and I just worked constantly for about four hours solid. I could probably have a slightly better tool on that job to be honest but after a while the tool started to give way it's only a cheapie off off Amazon I think so yeah it's all right it's got like a little speed setting on it which is pretty handy so I found out actually on the uh, on the second night I wasn't I wasn't supposed to be staying on the boat there was this sort of like a claws there in the yard so uh, I found a cheap hotel in Southampton and 
stocked up for some food and drink and what have you um, for the trip around. Okay, so that's it for this maintenance trip. Um, I've got quite a bit done and uh, the next time I'll see her is, um, sh should be afloat hopefully. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've uh, got the anti-file done, um, the solar panel connected, um, just sorting out all my things on board is probably taking up the most amount of time. Sanding the top side of the hull, trying to get rid of all that flaky paint. It's taken me about three hours each side, that's with 180 grit. Um, and it's sort of the best I can do with the time I've got allowed um, before she goes in. Plus it gives me some idea of what I intend to do with it in terms of uh, making it look a bit shinier. Um, almost definitely uh, I'm in contact with someone from, I think it's Trade Paints. Uh, Barry I think his name is. Um, and uh, I'm just waiting for him to get back to me because um, he asked for some photos of how bad the paintwork is because it may be that I have to remove all of this paint because it is in such bad condition but some of it is holding on um, if it does need to come off it'll be a soda blast job but here we go it is what it is um, it'll be something I end up doing back in Suffolk out of the uh, out of the water um, but yeah really pleased how much I got done I'm running three hours late and yeah I'm gonna hit the M25 and rush out of traffic so I better get off and I'll see you next time cheers